Hi, my name is Seth Hunt, and today my colleague and I are going to talk to you about native warm season grasses in the silvopasture system. In the next 10 minutes, I plan to help you discover the benefits and challenges of native warm season grasses and help you answer for yourself, what species of grass should I plant and how do I begin? To start with, silver pasture is a type of agroforestry where the goal is to optimize land utility with a combination of tree overstory and a pasture grass understory for livestock grazing. In silver pasture, one of the challenges is to maintain a good grass production with livestock grazing and tree overstory shading. Native warm season grasses offer a good way to meet this challenge compared to the commonly used exotic cool season gra pasture grasses like fescue and exotic warm season grasses like bahia grass and Bermuda grass. So what are the differences in warm season grasses and cool season grasses? A warm season grass does most of its growth during the warm parts of the year and becomes dormant in the cooler parts of the year. Warm season grasses typically have a trouble tolerating low winter temperatures. Some examples of some warm season grasses is the native big blue stem, the native eastern gamma grass, and the exotic bahia grass. Cool season grasses do most of their growth during the cooler part of the year while going dormant in the hot parts of the year. Cool season grasses are tolerant to cold winter temperatures but don't do well in extreme heat. Some examples of some cool season grasses are fescue, which is exotic, exotic ryegrass, and the native Virginia wild rye. Please note that even though most of the exotic examples that are given in this talk are cool season grasses, remember that not all warm season grasses are native and not all cool season grasses are exotic. Let us begin with the benefits of native warm season grasses. First. They are beneficial to wildlife. Native warm season grasses are not very dense and allow for good growth of forms and legumes which are favored by wildlife. Exotic grasses can lower legume and form density and lead to species stagnation in an area. Number two, native warm season grasses can help stabilize soil, preventing erosion. Three, the large root mass of native grasses contributes to soil fertility. Around one third of the root system of each plant is replaced each year. As these roots decompose, nutrients are returned back to the soil. In a silvopasture system, this means returning minerals for your grasses, livestock, and trees. Number four, on poorer sites and in droughts, native warm season grasses can produce more biomass with less nutrients and less water than cool season grasses. Additionally, native warm season grasses provide nutritious forage during the summer months, letting landowners greatly alleviate the cost of hay, irrigation, and fertilizer. Five, warm season grasses are highly palatable and are high in protein content. Six, once established, warm season grasses can be maintained and controlled in the silvopasture system by prescribed burning alone. Prescribed burning will also increase forb and legume count and can reduce woody competition. Mowing and herbicides can be used if prescribed burning is not an option. Warm season grasses don't need to be reseeded after a successful establishment. The downside to native warm season grasses are 1. Exotic cool season grasses are easier to establish, seeds are more readily available, and cheaper than native warm season grass seeds. 2. Warm season grasses are slower in establishment than exotic cool season grasses and can have a hard time dealing with weeds. Three. Exotic cool season grasses will outproduce native warm season grasses in optimal conditions. Here are a few examples and descriptions of some native warm season grasses. First, big blue stem. It has a very high palatability, high yield, and is very easy to establish and manage. Big blue stem is a high quality forage for all livestock. In addition, it is commonly used as erosion control as the roots extend up to 10 feet downward. Number two, switchgrass. Switchgrass produces a high quality warm season forage and a high quality hay. It is also used in erosion control. It provides excellent cover and forage for many small wildlife species. Additionally, switchgrass has a very high yield and a high wet site tolerance, but is difficult to establish and manage. 3. Eastern Gamma Grass Eastern Gamma Grass is extremely palatable to all livestock and tends to be overgrazed because of selective grazing. It has a higher leaf to stem ratio than the other warm season grasses. It is also highly productive for grazing or for forage. It has a very high yield and palatability, but has a very low dry site tolerance. 4. Indian grass. Highly used for erosion control. Indian grass has a high forage quality when green and fair when mature. It has high yield and palatability and is easy to establish and manage. Hi, 
My name is Daniel Heath and I'm here to talk to you about native warm season grasses in a silver pasture system. Establishment for native warm season grasses. There are two goals when establishing native warm season grasses. The first goal is to rid the area you are planning to plant native warm season grasses of existing grasses and weed competition. The first goal can be accomplished with grazing, burning, mowing, or haying for preparation for herbicide control. Please seek a professional before applying herbicide and make sure to read the labels. The second goal should be to prepare your site so that you have good seed to soil contact. This goal can be accomplished by disking or using a cult packer. Planting depth should be about a quarter of an inch into the ground. Different types of grasses will require different types of planters. For example, eastern gamma grass is usually planted with a typical corn drill while blue stem and Indian grass are usually planted with specialized native warm season drills. Planters can be rented from the soil conservation districts or from state fish and wildlife agencies. Management for native warm season grasses. Number one, after planting weeds should be monitored to make sure that they don't outcompete your native warm season grasses. Number two, after establishment grasses can be controlled via mowing, burning, disking, grazing, or haying. Control options are discussed more in depth in the University of Tennessee Extension publication that will be listed later in the video. Number three, remember that livestock rotation and grazing length will depend on your species of choice. Number four, be patient. Warm season grasses take a while to establish themselves, but once established, they are very rewarding. For a more in-depth guide on the establishment and management of native warm season grasses, please see this publication by the NRCS for Alabama called Establishing Native Warm Season Grasses in Alabama, or this guide created by the University of Tennessee Extension called Native Warm Season Grasses Identification, Establishment, and Management for Wildlife and Forage Production in the Mid-South. Native warm season grasses are ecologically sound and if you are patient, warm season grasses can be very beneficial. As a landowner, it is important to come up with a list of your goals for your silvopasture system and what you want your grasses to do for you. Depending on your goals, native warm season grasses might or might not fit your agenda. If you are interested in more information, here are a few websites. 1. For more information on grasses and seed selection consultation, see the USD plant fact sheet at the link listed. Number 2. For a guide on silvopasture released by the USDA National Agroforestry Center, see Silvopasture, Establishment and Management Principles for Pine Forest in the Southeastern United States which can be found at the link below. Number three, for more help and information on native warm season grasses or silvopasture, contact your local NRCS field office, conservation district, or your local Alabama Cooperative Extension Service. There are a few cost share programs in Alabama that will help alleviate the cost for establishing native grasses. Make sure to understand the requirements of the programs before signing up. Cost share programs such as EQUIP, Environmental Quality Incentives Program, can help with the establishment of silver pasture systems. EQUIP provides financial and technical assistance to landowners with livestock, agriculture, or forest lands. The program can provide up to $300,000 in aid, either directly or indirectly, and if the land is determined to have some special environmental or conservational importance, this payment limitation may be waived and increased to $450,000. Contracts with EQUIP have a maximum length of 10 years. In order to apply for EQUIP, call your state NRCS office or go to the link listed. Cost share programs will differ in requirements and availability depending on the state that you reside in. As a side note, there are quite a few native grass restoration cost share programs that are focused on wildlife rather than silvopasture. In conclusion, I hope this video has been helpful and insightful. Establishing native warm season grasses may require a bit more effort, but in the end it will create a good forage for your livestock, much better environment for, your, for wildlife, and make you a proud landowner.